If ever you spot this peculiar looking tinny cruising the rivers and lakes of East Gippsland with what looks like strange antennae reaching from its bows into the water, rest assured, they're fishing all right, but only to help keep the lakes and their fish populations healthy. Adrian Kitchingman and Jason Leshke are from the Arthur Ryler Institute for Environmental Research in Melbourne and with funding from the Gippsland Lakes Environment Fund, they spend a portion of their year doing vital research out on the water. Well, we're actually um, measuring the diversity of the fish up the river. We um, measure at different sample points along the river, uh, the salinity levels, and then we go in with an electrofisher and uh, capture, capture what fish uh, come up, and we uh, check which species and we measure them and uh, see what changes as we go up the river. All of which sounds eminently sensible, but those strange rods and wires reaching into the water are much more than fishing rods. In fact, they carry high voltage wires into the water. These guys aren't fishing, they're electrofishing. The electrofisher that, we that we're using down here is, um, is the only one in the world that can fish in these sort of conditions, uh, in the high salinity areas. It's, um, it throws in uh, a large electrical current into the water and it shocks the fish. When the fish are stunned, uh, some of them will rise to the surface and we scoop them up in a net and put them into a holding tank on the boat. And then when we've finished uh, electrofishing, we'll take the fish, right. we'll measure them, uh, test them, to see that if they're healthy and then return them to the water and they recover fully. When not allowed to touch the water, it will be harmful to a, to a human. Um, it'll kill a human if you're touching the water. But um, for the fish, they're small enough that the, uh, the electric, electrical colour uh, only stuns them. Far from being a pure research project, this work has ongoing benefits for the fish themselves, the lakes and rivers, and all the people who use and enjoy them. The work we're currently doing is really important for the sustainability and the management of the lakes. By knowing the, the different species, um, where they occur and where they prefer to live, um, should there be uh, anything going wrong with the lake, um, we can report that back to the managers and they'll, they'll get on to uh, whatever sort of rectification methods they need to do. The beneficiaries for this sort of research is uh, anyone in the community. So for science, it's interesting because we learn more about the fish and their life histories. For the community, this sort of information becomes public. Um, so fishermen will learn about when, what, what sort of conditions fish prefer. It might help them choose their fishing times, fishing places. And for industry, for commercial fishers, um, it, same sort of information that they're up for as well. And if you're wondering how many of those fish the boys get to take home, the answer is none. No, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's highly uh, illegal for us to uh, keep any of the fish. And, and we don't because, it, you know, when we're assessing numbers uh, of fish, uh, it doesn't make any sense to take the fish out. We want to put them back because uh, that, that's for everyone else's benefit too. They want to go and fish these fish as well. We, like everyone else, want a healthy lake. And um, we're hoping through our, through our work, we'll find the, the, the environmental sort of processes that help maintain a healthy lake and then people are aware, so if something does go wrong, they know uh, where to look and, what, and hopefully what to do about it to get the, uh, the lakes back into a healthy condition, should they need it.